You lack spontaneity. You're a sucker for complacency. The role of ritual in itself is a trap. Familiarization breeds contempt, and positive male feedback is what drives you. Because we're not trained in spontaneity. You dang well better believe you're not trained in it. When's the last time Uncle Sam said to you, here, take an airplane, go wherever you want, come back whenever you want, you don't even have to fly plan. Bye. That's not the way we do our business. It's plan, 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 stimulus, react. And it's good for you because when you get an emergency situation, stimulus, react. And that's why you're so dang good at it. But it will also cause you a problem in that same area. If you ever come up with a brand new emergency that is not covered by the dash one, you have been trained to still react to it, and you will make a quick decision and try to react to it. And in around 90 to 95% of the cases, you will be wrong on that first response. That's what we're trying to tell you. Because you're not coming up with a lot of free thoughts. And what we're trying to say is any emergency you ever have, except for a couple little ones that you, a couple like on takeoff and landing, where you only got a fraction of a second to make a decision. Almost every one you have in an aircraft, you have plenty of time to at least think about it a couple seconds. And what we're trying to say to you is come up with between four and six ideas with you, with your crewmates, with your wingmates, with a guy on the ground, whoever else. Give enough thought processes so that you have four to six alternatives. And if you do, what you will probably do is pick an alternative that was not your first alternative. And around 87 to 89% of the times, it'll be the right one for you, okay? That first reaction you have under a brand new unique emergency will probably be wrong. Be aware of that, all right? You're a sucker for complacency because the a person like you is a pro, and a pro has systems and methods, and systems and methods in the hands of a pro cannot fail. And what you've done is you bought, uh, sold yourself a bill of goods and turned around and bought it lock, stock, and barrel. There are times you feel you're infallible. You do not make mistakes. And every time you feel that way, you dang well better not put your, your foot on that airplane ladder because that airplane is trying to kill you, okay? And you better understand it. Every time you fly, you make one error. So don't buy yourself into the fact that you're the best one there is in your business. You might be dang good, and most of you are, but you ain't the best, and even the best makes mistakes, okay? <clears throat> Familiarity breeds contempt. Airplanes only kill others. When you first started flying airplanes, you were afraid of them. I don't mean yellow. I mean you were in awe of them. You got in the cockpit, you looked at all the gauges there, and you kind of sat down, you went, oh, <laughs> how can anybody do that? And you did it a couple times, and you said, it ain't that hard. Shucks, an idiot could do that. You looked at the syllabus and said you had these three hairy things to do in the next period of time. And you did them a couple times, and you said, this isn't that hard. This is pretty easy. And you changed your personality from going out to fly the airplane to going out and strapping the sucker on. Now you were in total control of it. You were the one that made all the decisions and did all the right things. And every time you feel that way, you better walk off that airplane. And every six months you're in a weapon system, you will become familiar with that weapon system. And every six months thereafter, you will have to go back and stand away from it and say, that sucker's trying to kill me. I'm starting to get complacent. I'm starting to get familiar, okay? Ritual, methodology supersedes the goal. I don't know what your rituals are or whether you have any, but if you get into them, get rid of your rituals in an airplane. They're killers. Let me give you a ritual that I have, and I can only equate what I do in rituals, and maybe you can take a look at it. Uh, many years ago, I flew a T-Bird. Some of y'all know what the T-Bird looks like. T-Bird is the old single-engine uh, trainer. It had the gear handle on the left side by the ejection seat, not up on the front, okay? Traffic pattern, you get into it, you bring the power back until you get the gear warning horn on, now you take the handle and move it from clear up to the top position of the ejection seat, clear down to the bottom. Okay? The next thing you check was the warning horn out and the three indicators down and locked. The last item on the checklist was to reach back down to the bottom, grab a hold of that handle, and jiggle check that hammer. Any idiot could see that it was down. For God's sakes, it threw that far. And all I do is look at that, reach down, and tap the top of it. That was my ritual. Flew it that way many, many times. Found I got a traffic pattern one day, threw the gear down, got it down, locked, checked down, locked, tapped the top of it, ritual complete, checklist complete, press on. Downwind called tower, says turn and base, base, or tower, uh, tab five zero, turn and base with wheels, touch and go, request, touch and go. Rajo, you're clear, touch and go, check your wheels down, lock. I didn't have to look, I was good. Power coming back, descending, 
flaps coming down, airspeed really increasing. It was funny what God did that day. He gave me about a 40 knot headwind on base. Had to keep bringing the power back. The warning horn came on. You know how difficult it is and how stupid it is to land with the gear warning horn on in an aircraft? I mean, that's dumb. Punch it off. Sure. About halfway through base, tower started talking to some idiot in a traffic pattern with some kind of a problem, emergency. You know, and he was on guard, by the way. You know how difficult it is to listen to tower and all the other communications frequency when some idiot's on Navy common? Turn it off. You betcha. Turn final. On final, it was funny what God did that day. He gave me about a 40 knot headwind on base, and when I turned final, he gave me about a 60 knot on final. Power back past idle, still high airspeed. I was a good pilot. I was going to stick it on the ground. No sweat. I needed that touch and go for currency. About 400 feet from touchdown, two flares shot across my aircraft. My first reaction, and I still remember it, was one of total anger. Some stupid is clogging my runway. Now I can't get current in my touch and goes, and I only have enough fuel for one. Golly! Slammed the throttle in, reached down to grab the gear handle, and I broke those two knuckles right there. And through the pain of that, I realized that the warning horn was for me, the airspeed was for me, the call on guard was for me, the flares were for me, and what I'm trying to tell you is this. If you do a ritual in a cockpit, once you have completed that ritual, I don't care if the checklist was done right or not, everybody can be standing on behind you and saying, you didn't do it, dummy, and you will not buy into it. You will not buy into it because you believe your ritual is complete. Get rid of them if you have them. They're death traps. I guarantee it. That's why we have gear up landings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Watch your rituals.